I think that's a difficult question, and, and I'm not sure it was sufficiently really addressed in the debates and discussions we had. Um, the needs of yeah, some of the poorest people living in rural areas. Yeah, we don't perhaps know quite as much about them as we might like to think we do. The terms of trade are very often in favour of urban areas. Um, you know, because otherwise people wouldn't want to go and live in urban areas. You know, the, even the, the poorest people living in shanty towns in, in, in parts of Africa or Latin America are escaping rural poverty. And so what is it that we can do and how we can use ICT actually to engage with, with what rural people want? Yes, there's lots of stuff on you know, market prices, but okay, it's only going to be the farmers who can sell their produce and you know, even if they know the prices, they may be frustrated because they can't walk you know, those extra distances. Um, the landless labourers, you know, how can ICTs actually help them gain jobs and improve their incomes? Uh, so I, I, I think I would have liked us to have just explored uh, what the basic challenges are a little more and then how we could use you know, the fantastic potential of technologies actually to make a difference. And I guess that's part of saying we need to address the needs. And that was one of the, I think, very positive things that came out of the conference. There was this you know, real re-emphasis that we begin with needs and then identify the technologies. It's not just about you know, delivering technologies and hoping that somebody will then <laughs> pick them up and use them. Yeah, I mean, a lot of my work, as, as I think you know, in recent years has been about trying to get us to move from a simple notion of public-private partnerships to a notion of multi-stakeholder partnerships. I mean, one of the working groups had sort of a triangle of, of, of relationships, which was sort of the private sector governments and donors, but that missed out, you know, the huge area of civil society, um, which, which I think is all too often forgotten. And you know, I do feel that partnerships that are just between, say, private sector companies and governments uh, have failed because they haven't, you know, firstly, addressed the needs of users, as we were talking about, but also they haven't involved social society and, and civil society and the way in which you know, that can help make programs sustainable. If, if we can work with you know, teachers' organisations or you know, unions, pe people who actually are engaged practically on the ground, working with, with NGOs as well. So you know, multi-stakeholder partnerships rather than public-private partnerships. And, and even then, understanding you know, the mechanisms whereby partnerships can be successful. We actually said very, very little about that. You know, what are good partnerships based on? Things like you know, trust. People often think that trust doesn't matter anymore. Working in development, trust is hugely important. Um, having shared objectives, making sure those are you know, development objectives, not just economic growth, but we heard a little bit about social development you know, and Sen's notion of freedoms. So you know, actually bringing people together in a, in a, in a better understanding of multi-stakeholder partnerships. So that would be something I would have, you know, if I'd have been a, a questioner rather than uh, the moderator, I'd have wanted to, to pursue a little bit further. I, I think one always goes through, through cycles, and I, I, I guess I'm on a slightly downward cycle at the moment that um, I've, I've always believed that ICTs, new ICTs, uh, the potential of, of the web, the potential of mobiles, have a kind of ambivalence in them. You know, they, they, they can reinforce existing power relationships or they can change them. And I, I, I sort of think that the balance is now much more on existing power relationships. If you take issues around you know, e-governance in rural areas, and just by introducing ICTs, if the government doesn't want to change the way in which it does things, isn't going to make any difference. Um, you know, those promoting a lot of ICT for D initiatives, you know, are doing it primarily for the market. Um, and, and the market's not going to deliver on the needs. You know, I know people disagree with me on this, but I don't believe the market's going to deliver on the needs of some of the poorest and most marginalised people. And, and so I want to find ways in which we can use ICTs to support you know, out-of-school youth, street children, um, people with disabilities. You know, why is it that, that you know, mobile phones you know, aren't completely, every mobile phone you have should be completely accessible. It, it, it should have you know, voice to text, text to voice, so that so people with disabilities can actually benefit because people with disabilities, well, those who have more disabilities can benefit more from ICTs than those of us who have fewer disabilities. And you know, those agendas um, just, just weren't really explored. It, over the last six or seven years since I've been working with, particularly GTZ, but also BMZ, you know, it's fantastic to have them still, you know, shining a light on the importance of ICT for D. You know, many other donors have, have sort of mainstreamed it or you know, forgotten about it. And, and to have BMZ and GTZ yeah, and Invent as well, you know, making this still important is, is you know, I think, incredibly significant for the wider development agenda. I think donors can, can create 
environments to help things happen. Um, I think there needs to be much more you know, joining up in, in, in donor uh, communities. I mean, they, some of that's happening, but there are parts of Africa, for example, where you know, lots of donors are still doing their own separate thing, and, and, and you know, that, that can actually be hugely damaging. So I think, you know, in direct answer to your question, uh, actually, you know, partly funding, but making sure that that goes into sustainable. Partly, you know, working together collaboratively. You know, there's a lot of rhetoric about we now have uh, donor governments in par with partner governments in Africa or Asia. That isn't really so different from donor and recipient governments. Uh, I, I, I think we need to be aware, you know, one thing that didn't come up in this conference very much at all was the role of China. You know, China is hugely significant in, in Africa. So how can we work with, with the Chinese and, and, and not just doing things ourselves? So creating that, enabling, sharing, under, sharing understanding. And again, donors have a, a, a huge role to play in that and, and you know, maybe tempering some of the harsher, aggressive capitalist instincts of some of our private corporations as well. Um, so working, working to you know, promote some development ideas that are based around you know, justice and equality and, and not just economic growth. I, I, I again believe quite passionately that the economic growth agenda is not going to eliminate poverty. So I would like to see uh, donors shifting away from uh, an agenda that's been around for a decade. Uh, we now need to address, as I've answered sort of a little bit in my earlier questions, you know, donors have a role in reaching the bits that the market won't reach and making sure that back to ICTs, all of us can benefit, not just the, the rich and the privileged.